Um, thank you for uh, being with us. Um, and rather than think about the weather outside, I'd like you just to, to imagine for a moment you're a bank manager and you've got a new customer who is like a tech customer, growing fast, being successful with a product that people seem to want. Millions of pounds come in and out of this bank account. And then the competition responds, things go a bit quieter. Then imagine a pandemic comes along, so things for everybody is a lot quieter. But you know that this new customer of yours has big plans. And as the pandemic subsides, you know the customer is going to emerge and they want to have 500 candidates at this huge event called a general election in a couple of years' time. You know, as the bank manager, that millions of pounds will continue to come in and out of the account in order to pay bills to stand those candidates. And surely, as a bank manager that's the, the, and a bank that claims to promote customer service, that's what you want. So, of course, the bank is Metro Bank and the customer is Reform UK. And we've got big plans. And the bank should be reassured, after all, we're regulated and monitored and supervised by the Electoral Commission to ensure that we are squeaky clean. The bank knows that its leader is a successful entrepreneur who knows how to get things done, who may even introduce new banking uh, contacts, potential new customers. So does it seem odd to you? Why would you, as a bank, why would you terminate that banking relationship when you know the potential that's coming down the road? Does that seem odd to you? Does that seem inexplicable? So I say, is it a coincidence that Reform UK is the only political party that is challenging this government to give all our freedoms back after the pandemic. The only political party that is challenging this government on its authoritarian plan to have vaccine passports. The only political party that is challenging this government on its plans to vaccinate children. And the government knows, of course, that we plan to stand 500 plus candidates. We will be the only political party at the next general election, and bearing in mind there will only be five parties with 500 plus candidates. We're the only party that will stand on a platform of cutting taxes for the least well off, the smaller businesses and the self-employed. The only party that will stand against this government's mad plan to ban all our, boiler, all our boilers. Maybe I should take it as a compliment that someone somewhere is worried, but it does seem pretty extraordinary that Given this, these circumstances, that the bank should decide to terminate our relationship with just 60 days' notice. And I just thought it'd be helpful to put in context how unusual this is, how unprecedented this is. I've been in business for over 30 years. I've operated across 12 countries, four continents. I've been a director of over 100 companies, hundreds of bank accounts, dozens of bank loans, dozens of banks, and in 30 plus years, never once, not one single occasion, has any of these banks in any of these countries ever said, please can we close your bank accounts? Please can we terminate your banking relationship? Let me be very clear, this is not in the ordinary course of business. This is not because they considered that it was not commercially viable. This is extraordinary, this is unprecedented, and it is without question, in my mind, the result of political pressure. Someone, somewhere, somehow, has applied pressure. There is no other explanation that I can think of. Now, I'm an optimist. The glass is always half full, it's never half empty. And therefore, I hope that over the next couple of days, some nice bank manager sitting in a traditional banking branch somewhere in our wonderful United Kingdom, possibly in the regions, will give us a ring and say they'll be delighted to offer us clearing bank facilities. That's the optimist in me. The pragmatist in me says that we need to have a plan B 
and a plan C. We all enjoy living in this incredible democracy of ours. But in order for democracy not just to survive, but to thrive and flourish, we need new ideas. We need challenger political parties, new people coming into politics that want to challenge, to shape, to influence, to push and probe the mainstream parties with new ideas, because that's how, as a nation, we will continue to grow and get better and better and to run our country more efficiently. So we need these challenger parties. But if we can't have clearing bank facilities, we can't pay bills, and therefore we can't stand candidates at the next general election. And I repeat, our clear plan to have over 500 candidates at the next general election. We've already got some 200. Indeed, we've got training days over the coming weeks of the first 200 candidates. So people should be under no illusion about our ambition. So therefore, in terms of looking at a plan B and C, we need to have clearing bank facilities. And whilst I hope the phone will ring, I'm also going to take the unprecedented step today. I'm going to write to the Governor of the Bank of England, Andrew Bailey, to ask that the Bank of England itself provide clearing bank facilities for political parties who are unable to secure clearing bank facilities with any of the mainstream banks. For whatever reason, they've decided not to provide them because we need that in order for democracy to continue to thrive and flourish in our country. Surely we all want that. We like to believe that we live in the mother of all democracies. But if new political parties can't thrive and can't grow, then it feels a bit like, to me, like we're living in the shadow of the godfather of an autocracy. And surely that is not where we want to be. So that's what I just wanted to say. And I would now be very happy to answer any questions from anyone. Hi, good morning. Um, so who is this someone somewhere who's worried about reform and applying political pressure? Do you Great question. I wish I knew. I've no idea. But it is so extraordinary. It's so unprecedented. It's so unusual. And we are the only political party that is challenging the government in the ways that I described. That clearly something's happened. It's not like they phoned up and said, it's not working for us folks. You know, <laughs> we, we need you to try and find someone else, take six months, take a year just to literally have a Zoom call and to say, we're terminating, 60 days notice. That is unprecedented. So something has happened somewhere, somehow. And I don't know what it is. I just know something's happened. And it's very strange. It's not normal course of business. It's unprecedented. And uh, just a second question, um, Richard. What do you think Andrew Beale will say to your request to provide clearing back facilities for all points? Um, I'm sure he's a very reasonable, pragmatic guy uh, who believes in democracy. And I hope that he will be concerned that people like us can't uh, have clearing bank facilities. And therefore, you know, at the end of the day, where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, if there was the political will, if there was the will at the Bank of England, they could organise it. They have uh, facilities for, uh, for certain institutions, mainly financial institutions. They could organise it. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Rachel from the DNA. Hi, Rachel. Um, you, seem, you say you don't know who it is, but you seem to be suggesting that someone in the UK government has done this and is applying pressure. So do you believe it is the kind of top of the government or someone like that? that I, I genuinely don't know. I don't... I, I've no idea. It may be, I've no idea. It's just something's happened. Someone somewhere has said something and applied some pressure. And do you have proof of that? No, I'm, I'm, I just know from my experience as a being involved in, in, in so many banking arrangements over such a long period of time, this doesn't happen. This is not normal. Oh, as many as possible, of course. Um, uh, but I think, I think genuinely, uh, this Conservative Party has now mo morphed into being the common socialists. They believe in increasing taxes to try and get herself out of the COVID crisis, which is completely the wrong thing to do. They want more regulation, 
not less regulation, which is the opportunity post-Brexit. You know, they've adopted an authoritarian nanny state. So um, in no sense can they be considered conservative. It's a sort of socialist agenda, which is why Keir Starmer is finding life so difficult, because essentially uh, the Tories have moved on to the socialists' natural turf. And that is the opportunity with a right of centre, high growth economic agenda, and that's the opportunity, that's the platform that we will be putting forward. Hi. Hi. The Express. I've got two questions. First of all, Metro have come out and said that it's not a political act, it's about, I think, commercial viability, and I want to hear your thoughts on that. And second of all, I'm interested in the number of candidates. It's, you keep saying 500 plus, which isn't 632 or 650. So I'm interested in whether you plan, similarly to the Brexit Party did, in standing down certain candidates against maybe people from the COVID research group. I know Steve Baker, for example, I'm quite vulnerable, so is that a plan that um, so, on, look, Metro would say that, of course. Um, understand that, that's come from their press department. You know, lovely warm words. But I've given you the reasons and the context of over 30 years of experience, 12 countries, four continents. This doesn't happen like that. When you know that millions of pounds is going to continue to come in and out of that account, and you as a bank, you thrive on money coming in and out of accounts. It's how you make your profits. This has got nothing to do with commercial viability. Something has happened somewhere. We'll probably never know. But I do think that it's important for people to understand what is going on. I, I do use the word 500 plus. I hope we will get to the absolute maximum. Um, you know, we're, we're, we didn't stand uh, in the general election in Northern Ireland. Um, so I'm quite sure that would continue to be the case. And there is, of course, the, the ongoing question as to just how many constituencies there will be at the next election. You've got the Boundary Commission. So um, I use the word 500 plus. Um, I'm as ambitious as possible uh, to fill as many as possible. Thank you. Great. Hi. Um, ben from PA. Hi, Ben. Uh, yes, it was a Zoom call. Um, I don't think it was Microsoft Teams, but it was one of the two. Um, I get confused. Uh, and um, no, we had no prior notice whatsoever. And then we received a, uh, then we received a letter. No warnings? No, nothing. No, we got asked to join a meeting, which obviously, as we all know, we either do by Teams or Zoom. Um, and then uh, and the letter followed it up. And in a sense, let's be clear. Um, you know, um, it's, it's, you know, a bank is a private business, so it's, you know, they can do what they want. Uh, I'm not disputing that. And I'm also not disputing the fact that um, it's not easy for banks. Politically exposed persons, they have to go through extra checks. Um, political parties, that's one thing. In which case, have a commercial discussion, say, look, actually, there's a bit more box ticking to do. So do you mind, we're going to have to charge you a few more fees. That's a perfectly normal commercial decision uh, a rational discussion to have. Sorry, Hi. Hi. Um, I want to hear your thoughts. We speculate what do you think has happened. I, I, some, someone somewhere has had a word. But what do you think? Well, That's what I think has happened. Yeah, I think someone somewhere has had a word. I don't know who it is. I don't know whether it's from a political party, from uh, a quango, or whether it's, you know, someone senior in the bank, I don't know. All I do know is it's unprecedented. There can be no other explanation uh, for it um, because it is so unprecedented, because I know from, from my, the context that I've explained. Thank you. But I, I do hope that out there, there is another bank manager somewhere who gives us a ring and says, you know, we, uh, we want to help. No, no the, uh, the, to be absolutely clear, uh, the Zoom call was arranged with what usual, sort of, I don't know, a couple of days' notice. Um, and it was in the Zoom call that it, it was a very, um, uh, it was a pretty short meeting um, because there wasn't much to say. Uh, they just said, this is a difficult thing to do, but we're going to ask you to close your account. So um, it's as simple as that. You know, they had made their decision. You know, something had happened somewhere, and we'll never know what it is. But uh, it's not good for democracy, and that's why 
uh, I think that the, uh, the Governor of the Bank of England hopefully will, will see if they can help. And much of this seems quite speculative, and I'm just wondering, if you're, if you're suggesting it's the government of the Conservative Party potentially, what are they really getting out of um, doing down a party that's currently polling at 3% rather than, for example, when you kick the... Because, it, it, look, I, I don't know who it is, and, and it may not be the Conservative Party, but be clear, given that we are, that our economic plan is clearly what would naturally be a conservative economic plan, as people focus on the next general election and people face the choice, and there are five main political parties standing with, as I say, many, many hundreds of candidates, and we are the only party that is standing on a, um, a low-tax, smartly regulated, high-growth agenda that you would naturally expect the Conservatives uh, to be standing on, but they're not, then clearly, actually, they're the, you know, if we gain some traction, if we gain some support, then it's going to come from the Conservatives. That's obvious. I can follow up that a bit. Oh, please, please note, yeah. you get worked on 16 to 20% three years before they were, they were on the okay. As the mood changes, as the, as, as the fact that we are in a situation where the government and opposition are essentially together, space is open. Not having money means it's very hard to enter that space. So, so killing their source is just... Yeah, the, the, the thing is, the maths are that you know, the, the Tories are obviously a few points ahead of Labour. But if we take support from the Tories, then all of a sudden that gap closes. And that's where things change. And that's about shaping and influencing uh, and having a, uh, a real impact on the debate. And um, look, we all know first past the post is difficult. But um, uh, it, it's clear the agenda that we're going to stand for, the economic platform that we're going to stand on. Um, and I think actually that will appeal to many, many people at a time when this government is talking about raising taxes. It, essentially, we're looking at austerity mark two uh, that the Chancellor is talking about. At a time when, just to be, just to be clear about the context of this, um, we've got the highest tax take for 70 years, and the government's own economic forecasts show the lowest growth forecasts for 60 years. That is not a plan that's going to lead to high growth and higher wages. That's why our economic plan, our economic vision is, is in our view, clearly the right one uh, for the country. Great, thank you very much. Thank you for your interest, your questions, and um, we will keep progressing. Thanks a lot.